The F-117 Nighthawk, also known as the Black Jet. The F-117 was the world's first operational stealth aircraft, which captured the world's imagination with its sleek design and groundbreaking technology. Today, we're going back through time to explore the secrets behind it. From its classified origins to its daring missions, the story of the Black Jet is nothing short of legendary. Back in 1936, Robert Watson Watt, a British engineer credited with inventing radar, observed that reducing an object's radar cross-section could help it evade detection by radar systems. This notion gained further traction in 1964 when Pyotr Yufemsev, a Soviet mathematician, published a significant paper titled Method of Edge Waves in the Physical Theory of Diffraction. In this paper, Ufemsev demonstrated that the radar return from an object is primarily influenced by its edge configuration rather than its size. Ufemsev's work built upon earlier theoretical research by German physicist Arnold Sommerfeld. Ufemsev's findings suggested that even large aircraft could potentially reduce their radar signature by optimizing their edge configurations. However, implementing such designs posed challenges as they could render aircraft aerodynamically unstable. Additionally, the computing technology available in the early 1960s was insufficient to support the complex flight control systems necessary for such aircraft to remain airborne. By the 1970s, advancements in computer technology made the realization of stealth aircraft more feasible. Lockheed analyst Dennis Overholzer came across Ufemsev's paper, recognizing its potential significance. This discovery, coupled with the increasing threat posed by sophisticated Soviet surface-to-air missiles following the Vietnam War, prompted efforts to develop a stealth aircraft. After the Vietnam War, when advanced Soviet surface-to-air missiles were knocking down heavy bombers, people realized there was a big problem. Even in the 1973 Yom Kippur War, Israeli planes were taking heavy losses from these missiles. This made folks worry that if there was a big fight in Europe, NATO planes might not be able to hit targets in Eastern Europe because of the enemy's air defenses. So, they decided to come up with a super-secret plan to build planes that could sneak past those defenses. This project was so hush-hush that only a handful of people in the Pentagon even knew it existed. It all started in 1975 with a model they called the Hopeless Diamond, a funny name kind of like a joke about the Hope Diamond because of how it looked. The next year, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency gave Lockheed Skunk Works a contract to build and test two stealth strike fighters, known as Have Blue. These planes were a mix of different technologies borrowed from other planes like the Northrop T-38A, F-16, A-10, and C-130. Even though both test planes crashed during testing, they gathered enough data to show that the idea could work. This success convinced the government to pour more money into stealth technology. A big chunk of that money went into making the real deal, the Lockheed F-117, also known as Senior Trend. The first test flights of the prototypes happened in December 1977, and even though they didn't go perfectly, they showed enough promise to keep the project going. And that's how the F-117, the stealth plane, was born. On November 1, 1978, the decision was made to start building the F-117, and Lockheed's Skunk Works in Burbank, California, got the job. The project was led by Ben Rich, with Alan Brown managing it. They brought in experts like Bill Schroeder and Dennis Overholzer to work on a computer program called ECHO. This program helped design the plane with flat panels called facets which scattered almost all of the radar signals that hit it. The first test flight of the prototype, known as the YF-117A, took off from Groom Lake, Nevada, also known as Area 51, on June 18, 1981, just 31 months after they decided to build it. The first actual F-117A was delivered in 1982, and by October 1983, it was ready for action. During the early days, the 4450th Tactical Group at Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada, trained pilots using other planes 
like the LTV A7 Corsair II. They also used these planes as chase planes during tests of the F-117. When the U.S. Air Force first approached Lockheed with the idea of a stealth aircraft, the director of Skunk Works, Kelly Johnson, suggested a rounded design. He thought that smooth edges would offer the best mix of speed and stealth. However, his assistant, Ben Rich, argued that using flat surfaces with angled facets would greatly reduce the plane's radar signature. He also believed that computer systems could handle the necessary aerodynamic control. In May 1975, a Skunk Works report titled Progress Report No. 2, High Stealth Conceptual Studies, showed the rejected rounded design. Instead, they opted for the flat-sided approach, which ended up surprising and confusing experienced pilots. One Royal Air Force pilot who flew the F-117 as part of an exchange program admitted that when he first saw a photo of the secret aircraft, he couldn't help but laugh and thought it couldn't possibly fly. The F-117, a single-seat aircraft, is powered by two non-afterburning General Electric F-404 turbofan engines. These engines were extensively modified to suit a stealthy aircraft, resembling turbojets instead. They were redesigned to produce minimal thrust to simplify the design of suitable inlets and nozzles. To hide the engine from enemy radar, a conductive metal mesh grill was installed in the intake, and the exhaust gases were mixed with cool air to lower the thermal signature. The aircraft can be refueled in the air and features a distinctive V-tail. It has a maximum speed of 623 miles per hour at high altitude a maximum rate climb of 2,820 feet per minute, and a service ceiling of 43,000 to 45,000 feet. The cockpit is relatively spacious with ergonomic displays and controls, although there is a significant blind spot to the rear. Overall, the F-117 is roughly the same size as an F-15 Eagle. The aircraft's avionics, including its fly-by-wire systems, were derived from various existing aircraft platforms, such as the F-16 Fighting Falcon, B-52 Stratofortress, F-A-18 Hornet, and the F-15E Strike Eagle. This approach helped streamline development and reduce costs. In terms of navigation and attack systems, the F-117 boasts a sophisticated digital avionics suite. It primarily navigates using GPS and high-accuracy inertial navigation systems, aided by an automated planning system. The aircraft can autonomously execute attack missions, including weapons release. The F-117's armament is housed within its split internal bay, capable of carrying up to 5,000 pounds of ordnance. Typical armaments include laser-guided bombs such as the GBU-10, the GBU-12, or the GBU-27, as well as BLU-109 penetrator bombs. Post-2006, the aircraft was also equipped to carry the Joint Direct Attack Munitions GPS INS Guided Standoff Bombs. Stealth is a defining feature of the F-117, achieved through careful design considerations. The aircraft's faceted shape, consisting of two-dimensional flat surfaces, helps minimize its radar cross-section. Despite its limitations, such as subsonic speed and lack of afterburners, the F-117's stealth capabilities make it difficult to detect on radar. The F-117 was a big secret in the 1980s. People speculated about it, with some even thinking there was a plane called the F-19. But when a crash happened in 1986, the military went to great lengths to keep it under wraps. They even replaced the debris with parts from an old crash to throw off curious onlookers. It wasn't until November 10, 1988, that the USAF finally admitted the F-117 existed. They showed a grainy photo at a press conference, putting an end to the rumors. After that, pilots could fly the F-117 during the day, and they didn't need to be associated with other planes anymore. By July 3, 1990, all 59 production F-117s had been delivered. The project showed that stealth aircraft could be reliable and easy to maintain setting a new standard for military aircraft. During its early years, from 1984 to mid-1992, the F-117 fleet was stationed at Tonopah Test Range Airport, Nevada, under the 4450th Tactical Group. This group was headquartered at Nellis Air Force Base, 
and A-7 Corsair II aircraft were used for training purposes. Most personnel and their families resided in Las Vegas, necessitating weekly transportation between Las Vegas and Tonopah via commercial air and trucking. In 1989, the 4450th Tactical Group was absorbed by the 37th Tactical Fight Wing, and in 1992, the entire F-117 fleet was relocated to Holloman Air Force Base, New Mexico, where it operated under the command of the 49th Fighter Wing. The F-117 achieved initial operating capability status in 1983. Pilots of the F-117, known as bandits, were assigned sequential bandit numbers based on the order of their first flight in the aircraft. The F-117 saw action in various conflicts, including its first mission during the United States invasion of Panama in 1989, where it conducted bombing runs on Rio Hato Airfield. The aircraft's involvement in clandestine operations continued until its relocation to Holloman in 1992. One notable incident occurred during Operation Allied Force in 1999, when an F-117 was shot down over Serbia by enemy fire. The pilot ejected safely and was later rescued by a United States Air Force pararescue team. The wreckage of the downed aircraft sparked interest from foreign nations, including Russia and possibly China. During the Gulf War in 1991, the F-117 played a significant role, flying numerous sorties and targeting high-value sites in Iraq with precision-guided bombs. However, initial claims of the F-117's effectiveness were later revised, revealing lower hit rates than initially reported. In subsequent operations, such as Operation Enduring Freedom in 2001 and Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2003, the F-117 continued to be utilized for strategic bombing missions. Its involvement in these conflicts showcased its capability to deliver precision strikes on key enemy targets. As advancements in stealth technology continued and other aircraft platforms assumed similar roles, the F-117 gradually became less prominent in military operations. The decision to retire the F-117 was made to allocate resources to newer aircraft programs, such as the F-22 Raptor, and F-35 Lightning II. The retirement process involved storing the majority of the F-117 fleet in Type 1000 storage at the Tonopah Test Range Airport. Some aircraft were preserved for museums, while others were scrapped. Congress mandated that the decommissioned aircraft remain in a condition suitable for potential future reactivation until their complete demilitarization, scheduled to conclude by 2034. The F-117 departs active service with grace, leaving a legacy of brilliance, tenacity, and steadfast devotion to duty. Even if its wings are no longer in use, the Black Jet's spirit endures and motivates upcoming engineers and aviators to continue pushing the envelope of what is conceivable in the air.